In The Godfather II, Michael Corleone was put in an impossible situation, where his former capo regime and close associate Frank Pentangeli was going to appear before the Senate and be a witness against him. At this time, Michael was trying to convince the public that he was just an honest businessman and investor, and was working on removing any and all accusations that surrounded the Corleone family. This was so he would succeed in his mission to make the Corleone family actually legitimate. However, following a clever plot orchestrated by Hyman Roth, Michael was now at risk of losing everything, as Hyman was able to make Pentangeli appear before the Senate and testify against Michael, in which would mean the end of the Corleone family. Roth, he engineered it, Michael. Frankie went to make a deal with the Rosado brothers, and they uh, tried to kill him. He thought you double-crossed him. However, just before Frankie was to testify, Michael appears with someone clearly related to Frank. And so Frank was shocked and then changes his entire testimony in order to not convict Michael. But the question we all want to know is why? Why did Frank suddenly change his mind? And how was Michael able to miraculously survive this seemingly impossible to escape trap? After all, Frank truly thought Michael betrayed him, and if he didn't cooperate, he would be the one facing prison time, and even worse. So why did he basically save Michael, and thereby the entire Corleone family? And what exactly did Michael do to achieve this? That's exactly what we will reveal in this video, and much more, that will leave you amazed. State your name, please. Frank Pentangeli. And where were you born? Papa Nico, it's outside of Palermo. Frank Pentangeli, also known as Frankie Five Angels, was born in Palermo, Sicily, and was a longtime Corleone family member and served as one of its top soldiers, under Capo Peter Clemenza. In the 1930s, Frank worked under former mob Don Giuseppe Mariposa, who had controlled the streets of New York for some time. However, later on like many other capos under Mariposa, he began to see that the tides of power were turning, having witnessed his boss's incompetence in ruling over the criminal underworld, Frank decided that it would be in the interest of everyone to see new leadership over the criminal underworld, and so secretly began siding with this Don. And of course, that Don was Vito Corleone. And so after swearing his allegiance to the Corleone family, Frank would continuously report to Clemenza on what Mariposa was up to, giving the Corleone family an edge in this conflict. After Vito had come out victorious, replacing Mariposa as the most powerful Don in the city, Frank would be one of the best and effective enforcers in the Corleone family. He was Clemenza's top soldier and became his right-hand man. He was also very well respected for his skills and loyalty. He served the Corleone family for many years, which was why when Clemenza died, Michael put Frankie in charge of Clemenza's regime, as well as heading the entire Corleone operations in New York. Frank Pentangeli, although often rash and aggressive, was very well liked, he shared Vito's principles and values, which is something important to note, as we know later on he would be challenged on whether he would continue hold on to these ideals, or betray everything he stood for. At this time, Michael was the Don and pretty much controlled the entire criminal underworld. The Corleone family was growing exponentially in power, even as Michael was working on transitioning the family away from its illegal operations. Hello, Mike. Welcome to Las Vegas. However, as Michael moved the family business to Nevada, he still needed someone reliable to continue the New York operations. The obvious choice to have run the New York operations was Capo Regime, Peter Clemenza, <laughs> who built the Corleone Empire alongside Vito. That Corleone. But as we mentioned earlier, after Clemenza died of allegedly a heart attack, no, no, there was no heart attack, Michael selected Frankie to take over. Michael and Frank, although different in many ways, both had a tremendous respect for each other. Michael respected Frankie's loyalty to the family and to his father, as well as being reliable in street matters. I like you. You were loyal to my father for years. He liked that Frankie held on to the values of what La Cosa Nostra initially stood for, even though Michael found some of these aspects as outdated, he knew that people like Frankie were valuable to the family. From Frank's point of view, he knew what Michael was capable of, he understood that Michael like his father was ambitious and intended to reach his vision by any means necessary. 
Although he disliked some of Michael's methods, he realized that Michael was not like any of the other Dons, in that he was not interested in street affairs and rather focused on the bigger picture. I don't, look, I don't have your brain uh, for big deals, but this is a street thing. Who had Frank Pantangeli killed? While Michael was in Cuba, Frank Pantangeli was following his Don's orders and agreed to have a sit down with the Rosado brothers. Remember, Frankie had only agreed for the sake of Michael, he genuinely hated them, but he respected Michael and so agreed to try to come to some sort of agreement with them. But we all know that it was actually a setup, brilliantly formulated by Roth. And as we know, after Frank was ambushed by the Rosado brothers, they actually framed Michael as the culprit behind this attack by saying, Michael Cook, ah! and he says hello. This instilled the idea into Frank's mind that he was betrayed by Michael. So now you can imagine what was going through Pentangeli's mind and how he had felt thinking that he was the one betrayed by Michael. We'll continue on how the FBI got to Frank and convinced him to testify later in this video. Also, it's important to note that at this time Michael did not know Frank was still alive, in which will have grave consequences later on. After Michael manages to escape and returns from Cuba, he must now do everything in his power to protect the family. At this time, the U.S. Senate was investigating the growing influence and power of the Mafia in the U.S., popularly known as the Kefauver Committee. And since Michael was the most powerful Don, he was the center of this investigation. They were also digging into Michael's past, namely into his involvement in taking out police Captain McCluskey and Virgil Salazzo. But Michael knew all this and had planned to use it to remove these accusations as he tries to enter the legitimate business world. Michael at this time was somewhat arrogant and wanted to outsmart the Senate and use its publicity as a PR stunt. Which is why Michael, instead of invoking his Fifth Amendment right, which is what every other intelligent Don would have done if they were in the same position, which allows them to not have to lie in front of the committee, in which if they do they would be risking serious perjury charges, which means they would face some serious jail time not to mention a hefty fine. The Fifth Amendment would mean that Michael could legally avoid answering certain questions during the hearing that would incriminate him. But Michael saw this as a sign that would lead the public to think he has something to hide, and so, ignoring his consigliere and lawyer's advice Michael confidently dismisses all the allegations, in which if proven would send Michael to jail and destroy the Corleone Empire. He has not taken the Fifth Amendment as it was his right to use. So he very openly and publicly lied to the government. Michael in his head knew this was a risk, however he felt as though he held all the cards to his favor. He pretty much owned a senator within that committee, his biggest enemy at the time Roth was in hiding after the whole Cuba incident, not to mention was in extremely poor health. Also, at this time the only witness the committee had was Willie Chichi, who confessed Michael was the boss however, he couldn't prove any illegal or criminal activity that Michael was directly involved in. Corleone. Yeah, Counselor, Michael Corleone, right. Did you ever get such an order directly from Michael Corleone? No, uh, I never talked to him. This due to the structure of La Cosa Nostra where there is always a buffer between the boss and his soldiers. The family had a lot of buffers. <laughs> Therefore, Michael saw no serious threat, as well as Michael himself having an impeccable record by serving the army and being a war hero, the fact he was never arrested and being involved in various other charitable and political activities were all factors Michael thought would play in his favor. However, as we all know, what happened next completely struck Michael by surprise. Alive. Pantangeli is alive. As you may recall, we discussed why Roth set up Frank and then framed Michael as the one behind that attack. Michael Cook ah! and he says hello! Well, here's why Roth had been positioning himself to have different options to take out Michael. Roth knew Michael was very intelligent and so couldn't underestimate him. And so when Michael survived all the previous attempts, Roth knew he had just one last opportunity to completely destroy the Corleone family and this was the perfect plot to do so. Roth had a senator under his payroll and had persuaded Willie Chichi to testify against Michael. But even that wasn't what completely caught Michael off guard. After surviving the Rosado brothers' trap, Frank even though very reluctant to do so, breaks his oath of omerta and agrees to also testify against Michael. This is perhaps the best and most brilliant play against the Corleone family we ever got to see. 
Roth knew Michael was due to testify and had placed this as a contingency plan. And so, since Michael didn't plead the fifth and lied to the committee, you've opened yourself to five counts of perjury. So basically, if Frankie testifies, it literally means the end of the Corleone dynasty. This is the biggest and most difficult challenge Michael Ha ever faced, and with such short time to think, Michael shocks everyone with what he does next. So to reiterate, after Frankie was ambushed and thought it was Michael who had set him up and betrayed him, Frank was infuriated and was in complete shock, which is why he agreed to make a deal with the authorities. He thought you double-crossed him. Well, the New York detective said he was half-dead, scared stiff, and talking out loud that you turned on him. But that's not the only reason he betrayed Michael. Pentangeli was also being investigated by the Senate, since he was also a high-profile figure in the Mafia, in which, if convicted, he would face a minimum of life in prison. Therefore, instead of facing those charges, he decided to cooperate with the government. They already had him on possession, bookmaking, murder one, and a lot more. He understood the repercussions of his actions, but the fact he was facing such serious consequences, but mainly the fact he thought Michael set him up, blinded him from his oath and principles. Wow. My life, my, my, my life won't be worth a nickel after tomorrow. Clearly, Michael was in a very desperate position. He could not get to Frankie as he was being held in a very high security army base with 24 hour guards. And even if he miraculously managed to get to Pentangeli, he would be the biggest suspect if anything were to happen to Frank. So he needs to somehow either not allow Frank to reach the courtroom, or preferably, somehow get Frank to change his testimony. But the question is, how is he going to be able to do this in such a short amount of time? Well, Michael made him an offer he can't refuse. So who was that man? The man that Michael brought with him to the hearing was Vincenzo Pentangeli, Frank Pentangeli's older brother. He lived in Sicily his whole life as a true mafioso, strictly abiding by the code of the mafia. So, when he saw his brother very publicly, breaking the code of Omerta and dishonoring his family, Vincenzo was in disbelief with what he was witnessing. When Vincenzo enters and makes direct eye contact with his brother, Frank immediately looks at Michael in absolute shock, and without uttering a single word, Frank gets the message. Michael had extraordinarily managed to send a direct and clear message to Pentangeli, without having to utter a single word or risk being caught, rather he did it in plain sight. This was such a brilliant move by Michael, as it conveys two different messages at the same time. The first and the most important is Michael showing Pentangeli how far his reach, power and influence can go. In fact, within just a few short days, Michael was able to get to Frank's brother and even have him on a private jet, just in time for the hearing. So in Frank's mind, he began to really comprehend what Michael is capable of. If Michael was able to get to his brother from all the way from Sicily, what else was he capable of doing? Not only that, but it's clear if Pentangeli would go through and betray the Corleone Empire, what was Michael going to do with his brother, or even his family? So even if Michael doesn't take out Vincenzo, the whole Pentangeli family would be outcasts, both in the US and in Sicily, as Pentangeli's action would reflect on them. In addition, who knows how the Mafia in Sicily would respond if they were to find out Frank broke his oath, as we know the Mafia in Sicily don't hesitate in forcing the Mafia code. He knew how ruthless they were, especially dealing with traitors as even his entire family could also be labeled the same and face grave consequences. So the first message was basically threatening Frank that if he would betray his Don, he won't be the only one to suffer the consequences. But this was not all Michael had accomplished by bringing Vincenzo to the hearing. The second message Michael was able to send to Frank was actually reminding him of their values and culture. Frank revered his older brother as he embodied what a true Sicilian represented. He's ten times tougher than me, my brother. He's old-fashioned. And so, because Frank had agreed to testify in a moment of weakness, his brother reminded him of what they grew up believing in and the code they were supposed to uphold, no matter the consequences. 
Therefore, the combination of these aspects both forced Pentangeli to rethink and eventually not cross Don Michael Corleone. Did you serve under Capo regime Peter Clemenza, under Vito Corleone, also known as the Godfather? I, uh, I never knew no Godfather. Oh, 